What's up everyone? For today's video, we have an exciting product to talk about. It is the brand new 35F 1.4 Sigma DG DN art series for L mount and E mount. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait, Justin, there's already a 35 1.4 Sigma out there. But if you're aware, a lot of those Sigma lenses that were converted to the mirrorless systems were already just for DSLRs with an adapter on the inside. So they weren't really optimized for mirrorless systems. Um, the way you can differentiate that is if the lens has the DGDN. So this one does. So that stands for digital native. And that's how that we know we're able to use this for the L series and the E mount. Now, there are a little bit of differences uh, externally, and I do want to start off talking about that at first. The size comparison, um, I don't know the exact size, but me and Todd were looking at them, or Todd and I were looking at them side by side, and this one is slightly smaller. Now, you definitely will be able to notice it, but it's not by very much. So one of the biggest differences that you're gonna notice is we do get an aperture ring on the exterior of the lens. Now this is optimal for videographers out there. So if you are a video shooter, shooting with like the S1H or any of the Panasonic series, you're gonna be happy to see that this is included. Another thing to note that it's not just hard stops. You can actually de-click the aperture on the bottom side of the lens and now I get that smooth transition, which is gonna be nice. Uh, speaking of the external, we do get our autofocus, manual focus switch. We do get an AFL button. Now you can program this inside the camera to a variety of different uh, things, but you can just mainly use that for locking down your autofocus point. We do get a 67 millimeter thread on the front and this lens is also weather sealed. So we're gonna get, get coatings on the front element to help out with weather sealing. And you're gonna notice on the back side as well, we are gonna get a little, I guess, rubberized gasket for weather sealing. This lens as well also offers a very close focusing distance. We're actually able to focus up to 30 centimeters or around two inches. So really excited for that feature as well. Now, the most prominent difference that you're gonna see between this lens and the previous 35 1.4 uh, is going to be the way it focuses. So this lens is using a stepping focusing type motor, and it's actually also using a single focusing element. So this is gonna be the reason why you're gonna get an improved autofocus in this lens compared to the other 35 1.4. Now, personally myself, I haven't used this lens just yet, but Todd actually had it for a few days, and that was the first thing he talked about, was how fast this one autofocus and how much of an improvement you saw on this lens as well. So really excited. Uh, back to the elements again, um, we are getting Sigma's anti-flaring coatings on this. Now, I've tested it with the 85. If it's anything like that, it's just gonna handle ghosting, flaring, uh, aberration. It's gonna handle that just amazing. So super looking forward to testing that out on this lens as well. And just for a point of reference as well, if you look at the description on our videos, you'll notice that we shoot everything on the first version uh, Sigma 35 F 1.4 on the Panasonic S1H and sometimes on the S5. So we're gonna be able to tell a difference there and we're actually gonna test the autofocus between the two and let y'all decide and see which one's faster. All right, so that's all the specs that I wanted to cover on the lens. Um, let's get right into the shooting. We're here at South Congress with Alexis. Let's jump right into it. All right, so we just got finished shooting on South Congress with Alexis with the all new Sigma 35 1.4 DGDN. So now it's time, of course, for some final thoughts and what we overall thought about it. Um, optically, I wasn't able to tell too big of a difference between the other 35, because I already thought that one was a solid lens and it is a solid lens uh, compared to this one. But what I will say is the biggest difference that I saw was in the autofocusing system. 
Now, if you see the videos that we did um, in daylight, so like direct sun, the other 35 actually performed fairly well. Um, but it was whenever we got in the shadows, um, it was doing that thing. And if you've shot with Panasonic before, then you might know what I'm talking about, where it shows that it's in focus and it detects the eye, but your image actually isn't all the way in focus. So that was happening with the older version versus this one. Um, this one had a much closer focusing distance as well. And it was actually able to track a lot better. So that was the one thing I did notice. And as well, if you're shooting with the older 35, you consistently feel the focusing motor glass inside there moving the entire time. With the other one, I didn't feel a thing when I was focusing. So there was a difference and that was probably the biggest differences between the two. Having the uh, actual aperture ring on the external of the lens was another great feature. I loved having it. I mean, you can always program it to the front dial, back dial, but I feel like I'm just a little bit more engaged with my photo and have a little bit more control when it's on the lens and I feel like I'm physically turning it. And I guess you are physically turning it like an old school lens. So that was another great feature to add. And for videographers out there, if you're wanting to like change exposure and I, I know this isn't very like often that, you know, videographers will do this, but there are some certain like situations where you'll do shots where you do change your exposure with your aperture during. So another great feature to have on this as well. Overall, I thought the lens was really uh, great, sharp. Um, backlit situations of course it has the sigma anti-flaring uh, coatings on the lens and i thought that worked just as amazing as it did with their 85 millimeter so another great lens if you already own the older 35 i still think this is a lens that you're going to want to upgrade to um, just for the mere fact of the autofocusing it may be a little hard to tell in the video but actually working with it it did make a difference and i promise you you're going to want to upgrade to that one. Usually I'd say maybe you can stick with it, but no, this one you're going to want to upgrade. And if it's anything like Sigma's done in the past, the pricing is probably going to stay the same. So I wouldn't see any reason for people getting into the newer system why they would go with that one over this one either. Now, the reason I say I can see them doing that pricing because I don't have the exact pricing at the time of this video that we're recording but I do know a rough estimate on when they're expecting to release these lenses or when they're expecting to release this lens. And that is sometime mid-May of 2021. So when this comes out, check the link down below. I am going to put the link to get your pre-orders in a precision camera and video. And once again, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video.